student myself dv sir today i in front of you explain the chapter motion in a plane in this chapter we have to know about vector quantity that's why we know first about physical quantity anything in the universe which is measurable known as the physical quantity the physical quantity broadly classified into two categories number one scalar quantity which have only magnitude no direction for example mass length time etc number two vector quantity which have both magnitude as well as direction and obey the vector addition laws like triangle law parallelogram law and polygon law for example velocity acceleration etc now we have to know how we can represent a vector quantity there are two possible way by which we can represent a vector quantity see number one graphical representation in graphical representation to represent a vector we draw a straight line with an arrow where length of the straight line give the magnitude of vector and arrow give the direction of vector in other way symbolically we can represent a vector quantity by a letter with an arrow like this where letter represent the magnitude and arrow represent the directions so by these two possible way we can represent a vector quantity to know about the detail of vector we have to know some basic concept of vector number 1 equal vector what do you mean by equal vector whenever vectors having the same magnitude and same direction then the vectors are said to be equal vector see the example here i draw two vector a and b same length means their magnitude are same and arrow are on the same direction means both the vector having the same directions so here a and b having same magnitude as well as same direction that's why we can say a and b are equal vector next negative vector a vector is said to be negative of a given vector whenever the vector having same magnitude but the directions is opposite see the example here b vector having the same magnitude of a as the length are equal but arrow represent their directions are opposite that's why we can say a is a negative of b vector or b is a negative of a vector next co initial vectors whenever any number of vectors start from a common point then all the vectors are said to be co initial vectors see the diagram here a vector b vector c vector start from this common point okay then these three vectors are said to be coinitial remember one thing for coinitiality of vectors magnitude and directions may be same may not be same only the conditions required they are start from the same initial point next is coplanar vectors whenever any number of vectors whatever may be their magnitude or direction lie on the same plane then the vectors are said to be coplanar vector see the diagram 
here a vector b vector c vector their directions and magnitudes are different but they lie on the plane of this white board that's why these three vectors we can say are coplanar vectors next is collinear vectors whenever the vectors of same magnitude or different magnitude lie on the same line or parallel then the vectors are said to be collinear vectors see here a and b are of different magnitude but lie on the same line similarly here a and b are of different magnitude but they are lie on parallelly so therefore in this two diagram a and b are collinear vectors next is localized vector what do you mean by localized the vector which initial point is fixed so therefore what do you mean by initial point that is the starting point of a vector known as the initial point clear and lastly which is very very important known as unit vector what is the definition a vector having magnitude 1 are known as the unit vector but how can you determine there is a proper mathematical formula by which we can determine a unit vector suppose you want to determine the unit vector of this r vector then the formula is r cap r cap means this is the unit vector of r vector equal r vector by mod of r vector means whenever a vector divided by its own magnitude then we get a unit vector of that vector now see the diagram over here this is a three dimensional coordinate system x axis y axis z axis one thing you remember along x axis always the unit vector is i cap along y axis the unit vector is j cap along z axis the unit vector is k cap that's why if there is a coordinate point x comma y comma z then we can represent by vector form like this so r vector equal x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap so this is the vector representation of a point having the coordinate x comma y comma z and from this vector the magnitude of this vector we can determine by the formula root over of x square plus y square plus z square okay so now i give you a particular point the point is 3 comma 2 comma minus 6 so therefore what is the value of x 3 what is the value of y 2 what is the value of z minus 6 so therefore what is the vector representation of this point the vector of this point will be r vector equal 3 i cap compare with this equation x i cap means 3 i cap plus y j cap means 2 j cap plus z k cap means minus 6 k cap so this is the vector of this particular point now i ask you a question determine the unit vector of this so what is the formula the given vector by its own magnitude so that's why r cap equal given vector by own magnitude the vector is 3 i cap plus 2 j cap minus 6 k cap by magnitude formula again compare with this root over of x square plus y square plus z square so what is the magnitude of this vector root over of 3 square plus 2 square plus minus 6 whole square and by proper calculations we get the unit vector as 3 i cap plus 2 j cap minus 6 k cap by 7 so this is a very important topic of your syllabus finding the unit vector so how can you remember 
when you have a vector divided by its own magnitude then we get the unit vector of that particular vector thank you student